Hey, what's up, Kings fans, and welcome to the Hockey Royalty Podcast, the official podcast of HockeyRoyalty.com. I'm Scott Kinville, and we have got one heck of a show lined up for you tonight. As you can see, scrolling across the bottom of your screen, we have a new feature. You don't have to listen to me tell us all about your social media feeds anymore because we got them scrolling right across the bottom. And there you go. That's <laughs> I love surprises like that. <laughs> Oh, boy. And especially you're going to want to check out that YouTube uh, channel because we have got a really cool video made by the uh, the absent Russell Morgan tonight. Uh, again, he's doing king of analytical things, so we'll forgive him for that. So no, anyways, he's, he's headed to the rookie face-off. Well, yeah, he's oh, going to be doing yeah, analytical yeah. things there. So, And we're all jealous of him. That's uh... mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. So before I bring in our guests, I'm going to bring in our panel for tonight. As always, riding shotgun with me is the uh, the editor in chief, if you will, of HockeyRoyalty.com. He is our Shakespeare. He is everything with the pen and the typewriter. <laughs> no, actually, I'm the typewriter. Uh, Mr. Ryan Sykes, what's going on, Ryan? Hey, Scott, I'm doing well. Been looking forward to this podcast. How are you? Oh, absolutely. I'm doing fantastic. I'm I'm pumped up for this one. This is going to be really cool. Absolutely. And taking uh, taking Russell's place tonight while he's in Arizona doing analytical things. Is uh, we got a new nickname for him because he's now teaching a college course. Not only is a renowned author, he's teaching a college course now, guys, on journalism from his alma mater. It is Ryan the Professor Cowley, and there's his book right there. How yes. you doing, pal? Uh, Scott, I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me. Um, it's great to be here. And for the record, uh, my ego is very centered, so I am not jealous of Russell. <laughs> and I will keep telling myself that. <laughs> well, how can you be when you're a professor? Right? Well, exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So I'm going to bring our guest in. Our guest knows uh, King's prospect Brock Faber very well. Brock Faber plays at the University of Minnesota. And tonight we got his assistant coach there with the Minnesota Golden Gophers men's ice hockey team. It is Coach Garrett Raboyne. Coach, how are you? I'm doing well, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we Thanks appreciate for joining you coming us. on. Absolutely. Thank you. So how's things going out there in Minnesota? You guys getting ready for your season? Yeah, we are. We uh, like I was talking to you guys before we uh, we started recording here. We've had two practices. We're one of the last teams in the country to start, uh, but it is a long season. We've uh, you know we're just happy to get things going. It was such a crazy year last year. Uh, we were able to get a season you know in, and we felt like uh, you know we had we had a little momentum. At the end of the year, there uh, it ended too early, but again, a lot of returners. We have some uh, some exciting freshmen, and we just feel really good about our group. Nice, excellent, and we especially feel great about a Kings prospect you got there. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you know what? And, and I am I'm I'm happy to talk about Brock. Uh, you know, I've I've crazy as it sounds, I've coached. It seems like uh, mostly Kings players and prospects from my days at St. Cloud State. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, Blake yeah, Lazat, uh, mm -hmm. part of recruiting him out of Minot, and then watching him go to Fargo, and then Nick Dowd and uh, Kevin yeah. Gravel, so on and so forth. So a lot of Kings, uh, I've been fortunate enough to coach, and, and uh, Brock's the, the latest one, and, and uh, you know, they certainly have a good one there. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, no, no doubt. Garrett, I uh, just want to get a little bit of uh, information about your background. Obviously, you're an uh, assistant coach for Minnesota right now, so kind of uh, just uh, let the listeners know, you know, how, how you got started uh, to where you are now. Well, I played at St. Cloud State. I went through uh, Minnesota High School and on to the USHL for three years. Uh, was lucky enough to play four years at St. Cloud State and and uh, was uh, part of the leadership group. Wore a letter there for a couple of years, and and I went over to Europe. And uh, two years over there, my wife and I had uh, our son uh, in the summer go between my second and third season. And I knew I kind of wanted to get into coaching, wanted to be close to family. Coach Motsko gave me a chance kind of late in the summer. And uh, I really hopped on a moving train <laughs> that year, to be quite honest. And, you know, didn't recruit a player on that team, just stood on the bench and, and was a cheerleader. We went to the Frozen Four. Nice. Um, and then I had, uh, I had a good long run there at St. Cloud state coach Monsko takes the job here at the university of Minnesota. Um, and I knew, uh, that was the next step of my career. So now we're going into year four here. Um, and it's been, it's, uh, you know, not a long ride, but it's been a really fun one so far. Yeah, absolutely. And our condolences, by the way, that was, that's, that's awful. 
I, I appreciate yeah. it, guys. And it's, yeah. it's, you know, our hearts go out uh, to Coach Motzko and his family. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the hockey community has been incredible and in just how they rallied and, and you know, it puts everything in perspective, boy, uh, and how much sure does. Uh, this is than a sport, you know, and uh, pretty humbling to be, to be quite honest. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah, no no doubt. Question. But, um, but, you know, did you, uh, did you have any conversations with uh, Team USA head coach Nate Lehman about Brock from his time at the World Juniors? And uh, if so, what kind of feedback did he provide? I mean, we, I coached Moscow, coached the World Junior. So uh, he was, uh, he won a gold medal, he won a bronze medal. Uh, and then he's really close with Coach Lehman. Um, I talked to Steve Miller an awful lot, uh, one of the assistant coaches at Ohio State and helps run the, the decor uh, most recently with the, the World Junior team as they won gold. So we talked, uh, uh, Killer, as he's known, and myself talked uh, quite a bit about uh, Brock, but, it, you know, it, you don't have to watch too much on the player to, to know what he is. And, and, uh, and he was a, a big value for them, you know, not, I mean, he's, a, he's one heck of a defender, but he walked away with five points in seven games and, and uh, played a crucial role in helping those guys win the gold. Yeah, no doubt. And you know, what's so impressive about him. Just his poise. Yeah. I mean, he's <laughs> such a poised player, you know, he, he really is. There's well, no you're doubt gonna... about it. You're going to see him again this year. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, we got to remember he's, he's just a, he's a young man. Okay. Well, he's a young man and he's, uh, uh, he's, he's confident, uh, and he welcomes the challenge. And that's one of the greatest things about him. And, and, you know, as he, he didn't come in as a lamb as a freshman, but you know, he was respectful. And, and by the end of the year, that's what you saw was his personality started to come out. He was able to welcome, mm -hmm. uh, the challenge and he was uh he was a guy that wanted to be on the ice for every team's top lines and uh the championship game of the big 10 playoffs we were playing wisconsin and there was no chance that cole caulfield was going to be on the ice and he wasn't going to be out there. <laughs> right yeah. whether whether i wanted him out there or not he was going to be out there <laughs> sorry coach i'll go over the board he's, yeah. just, yeah. he's just one of those guys and, and you know what the the Drew Doughty mentality. You're not taking away my minutes. <laughs> no, no. And, uh, you know. So, Gary, I just want to back up. Uh, you know, uh, Brock was initially committed to Notre Dame. Um, he's from Maple Grove, Minnesota. What was the reaction from yourself and the coaching staff when he decided to come back home? Oh, well, we're pretty happy. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know if we were doing the high fives, but there was a one ha happy staff. And you know what? Uh, you see that nowadays. He's a he's a uh, he's a Gopher fan growing up. Uh, commits at a young age. Yeah. Uh, he goes away to the national team development program, and and as time goes on, he he realizes he wants to be closer to home. So, um, and and we're certainly reaping the benefits of uh, that decision. And uh, I think he's having the time of his life. You know, he's he's mm -hmm. uh, he's where he wants to be, and and uh, he's all in right here. Oh, and then no doubt about it. His freshman season at Minnesota, he scores uh, one goal and has 11, 11 assists. Excuse me. You know, where did you see his game grow the most from day one that he stepped foot on campus to the final horn of the season? I mean, I think uh, I maybe touched on it earlier. You just saw him demand more ice, and he, you know, he's he's a confident kid, but you started to see that in his play. Um, and you know, I think the 12 points he had with us, it, I mean, he had, I think he had 47 games at the program his final year and he had 12 points. Hmm. Now he comes to us, he plays about half that and he has 12 points. And uh, he, he's so, I mean, as you guys will see in time, he's so much more than points. I mean, his yeah. value, uh, he plays just, he plays heavy minutes. Uh, he plays against top teams for, you know, first lines he, he plays penalty kill we we haven't really used him on a power play and um you know i think that i think just his his game was just emphasized that much more uh as the season went on and, and we sure used him an awful lot in in most situations he took kind of a nasty fall in the big 10 semifinals against michigan state to the end boards just kind of want to look for your comments on um, initially when the play happened. And then I think most people expected him to miss the Big Ten championship, but he 
he skated up. You know, what does that kind of say about uh, just his toughness? Well, he he wants to play there and be there for his teammates is what it says. You know, first and foremost, I think that's what was on his mind when he went down. It, it was it was awkward, and you kind of just held your breath. And you know, he's getting evaluated. He doesn't finish that game, and and you know, you're kind of just uh, letting him be with the the training staff, and 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 you know letting them handle them because it's a quick turnaround. So we really didn't see him a ton. Mm -hmm. um, and the morning in, you know, the morning after it happened, we found that there's a possibility he could play. So, you know, a little story is he calls me. I know he's going to play, but not to what extent. And he calls me and he's like, Hey, I'm, I'm playing. And I was like, yeah, I know you are faves. And he's like, no, <laughs> he's like you don't, you don't understand. Like you're going to play me, you know, uh, tonight and I said I know I'm going to play you I will we'll figure out how much that is he's like I'm not just going to sit on the bench you're gonna I want a regular shift and I'm like yeah. wow. said, listen buddy I said <laughs> if your jersey's in front of me I said you're going on the ice we've been you know we've been doing this long enough already you know I'm going to play I can't help myself yeah. so but he just want he's a hey he's a gamer he wants to be out there with his teammates and uh you know what it, He's one of the guys, man. He's a big part of our group. Do you expect, uh, I guess, from his freshman season to his sophomore season, do you kind of see him tapping into more of an offensive potential this coming season? Yeah, that's one of those things we're going to work on as we grow his game. And, and you know, he's coming back to the college to develop as a, as a player, and that's one of those things we're going to touch on. And, you know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's nothing crazy right now with him. It's just little tweaks like, when he, if you guys could have seen him as a Bantam player, he's Bantam player of the year in our state, okay? And he was run and gun. He was all offense. And then he went to <laughs> the national team, and he really put an emphasis on rounding out his game defensively. And now there's that happy medium. And he's uh, I think he, he values defending so much. He's committed to it. Um, and he doesn't, he doesn't sacrifice defense for offense. You know, and that's why you see it. I mean, he's such a dependable and reliable defender. But I think, you know, we can we can continue to grow his game. He's going to identify when he has opportunities to join the rush. You know, when, you know, he's in the offensive zone, where can he go to become available for a pass? And when he gets that pass, what's the next what's the next play? Is it just get it to the pads uh, or do you have enough time to maybe take what the goal he's given you? Uh, so all those things. Um, you know, could possibly lead to him getting more offense, but I'll, I'll say it like he's, he's such a valuable player as he is right now. Yeah. Um, but Hey, we're going to keep trying to grow that uh, layer of his game. And is you there, know, that's why it's so great. I'm sorry, Ryan. I just wanted no. to say real quick that that's why it's so great when players, I, for me personally, my standpoint that they decide to stay, you know, at college and get that yeah. development time in because, you know, truthfully, the NCAA, of course, has grown leaps and bounds, you know, over the past few decades. Really, oh, yeah. There's no doubt about it. And coach, like you, were, you and I were talking earlier. I mean, I live in upstate New York, so especially with the Big Ten, because I mean, I grew up around the Hockey East, ECAC. Uh, the Big Ten has just become this phenomenal hockey conference. There's just no getting around it. And I, I'll tell you, you guys have got like the best competition in the NCAA there now. And for him to stay and, and be around your coaching staff and you and and everything that goes with it is only going to be good for, for Brock, really. Well, and, it, and you know, everyone is starting to see how how it translates. Uh, college hockey to the National Hockey League. Like, the stats are coming out. It's as, uh, it's as good as it's ever been. Um, and it's not only for the prospects, not even not only for draft picks, but for free agents. I'm I mean, sure. you, yeah. you guys have Blake Lazat right now. I, mm -hmm. Alex Iafalo, those are darn good players in the National Hockey League. Went undrafted. Yeah. Um, so, um, but hey, it is uh, the Big Ten's in a great place. Uh, we certainly are excited to have Brock back, and, and for the right reasons. And you know what? Uh, you have to realize too. Like one of the big things is that summer of development. Now these guys, they were shorted that a summer ago. Now they had a chance to train uh, on campus um, with Cal Dietz, who's just outstanding here at the University of Minnesota. Uh, and we're starting to get some of the data back as we do our testing. And, you know, Brock's had that summer that he needed to have. You know, he, he's he's such an athlete in, you know, 32 and a half inch vertical. Uh, he, 
probably one of the fastest players out of the blocks starting on the ice, but he's also the fastest player on our team on just in, in the street shoes, you know, sure. on solid ground. So, you I mean, he, that's, a, that's all he, he's just a, he's a heck of an athlete. He's explosive. And, and, and you see in his game like that, how he closes uh, on people and takes away time and space is what really makes him special. So that's very interesting, actually. So for the off season, then, just for our listeners who don't know, so you guys concentrate on the physical aspects and not so much on ice, you know, mechanics. Tools, yeah, no, we're not allowed right? to work with them on the ice uh, in the okay. summer, uh, as NCAA rules uh, gotcha. state. So we, they're they're out of our hands, and it's up to them. Uh, but they can train on uh, campus in the weight room and in in the facilities. And uh, you know, our 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 weight training staff is tremendous. As Cal Dietz leads it all, and there's uh, he has a whole staff full of interns that that really dedicate their summer to helping these athletes take the next step, and and uh, Brock's a beneficiary of them. Right, excellent. Yeah. What's what's Brock squatting these days? <laughs> hey, <laughs> Good question. The days of the old back squat, I think, might be over. So yeah. they they have they, the dumbbells. It's, it's, it's yeah. a it's like. Cal, it's a he's a mad scientist. I don't even I don't even start to try to figure out what they're doing up there. <laughs> you know, I I hate uh, kind of putting the, the pressure on um, yourself and the player, but is there a, is there a player that Brock reminds you of? You know, a previous player or an NHL player? You know, that's a tough one. He's he's unique, and he's uh, geez, he he's kind of a combination of of so many guys like he, you know, he's kind of a little bit like Ryan Suter. I know that's a, I mean, that's way up mm-hmm. here. Um, and he's, I mean, he's only a sophomore in college, but I think yeah. uh, how well he skates, how efficient he is, he can play for days. Uh, he can help on the offense. And, and, you know, like I talked about his ability to close and defend and, and just shut plays down is, is one of the first things you notice. But then I think, uh, Going back to his draft year, when it really, when his stock really started to rise, was when the analytics started to talk about how uh, he connects the dots coming out of his own zone. Like he's just so efficient on uh, moving the puck from his stick to one of his teammates' stick and getting it up the rink. Like he doesn't make a lot of mistakes uh, on the breakout. Um, he's able to sort the play coming up the rink, and and uh, and nowadays, hey, you have to play with the puck nowadays, and. and uh, for him to be able to play with the puck and defend at a high level, I think, uh, it, you know, it's 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 why we're talking about him right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. So is that one of the things that you think maybe has changed about the game, maybe more in the past five to ten years, just how much you have to play with the puck as opposed to maybe teaching the dump and chase, so so to speak, or, or something like that? Well, it's the game is so fast. And, right. you know, the way the rules change, just, the, I mean, it's it's – it's an extremely entertaining game to watch, but I think the type of player, you know, you just don't have, you know, four heavy uh, defender type defensemen, you know, you, and, and with two skilled guys that play on the power play. Now you, you <laughs> then now they all have to be able to skate and break pucks out and, um, and join in the offense. It's, it's the, the, the positions of forward and defense are, are not so like rigid they're, it's kind of a five man unit out on the ice at any time in today's game. And, uh, it's fun to watch and, and, you know, it's, uh, it takes, you have to have the ability to skate and play with the puck as you're saying. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. It's almost like a video game now. (laughs) (laughs) More times too much. It gets a little scary on the bench. So, uh, Garrett, we've talked about all of the positive things that Brock has going for him. You know, gap control, speed. Uh, he's starting to tap into that offensive potential. He back squats a thousand pounds, one legged. Um, <laughs> you know, which areas or uh, what? Where do you see that he needs to kind of uh, improve the most coming into his sophomore year? I think he, hey, we, we're growing the player. We're just the complete player. We're. Um, there's no one major facet of his game that needs to be, uh, you know, turned around. Like I mm-hmm. said, we're, we're just tweaking here and there, uh, maybe identifying when to join some, some, uh, like I talked about some, some things in the offensive zone that can maybe help him. 
Um, he needs to continue to to grow those strengths of his game as well. We're not, you know, we're not just going to look at some things that could, you know, call them weaknesses, if you may. Uh, but you have to continue to grow your strengths, um, and that's his that's his building blocks. His, his bread and butter uh, is that skating base um, and, and ability to close uh, gap gap and strike. He's, uh, you know, and and we have a good group around him. Like he he's. Uh, He's a big part of our team, and we, we have a lot of depth, we feel, in all three positions, but uh, particularly in our back end. And, and he, he's going to play with some good players. There's the high-profile guys, the world junior guys in the drafts, but we have some undrafted guys that uh, play play a real strong game, and they're a close-knit group, uh, and they're <laughs> fun to work with, boy. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You guys look very strong last year, and I'm sure you'll be this year, too. Yeah, and and just uh, a, a couple more questions for you, Garrett. We can yeah. let you go. But, you know, uh, I, I, I know that you guys just skated as a team for the first time on Monday. So your two practices, three pack, three practices in or whatever it might be. Um, the Big Ten is obviously looking pretty stacked with Michigan over there in Ann Arbor and Wisconsin. Is there any uh, inkling from Brock on uh, players he's anxious to, to defend this year? No, uh, I'm – I know his I know what his answer would be, yeah. um, but it, it, the league's the league's going to be strong. Um, everyone feels good about their team this time of year, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, we just hey, we have to. It's just, just one day at a time right now, and and same with Brock. Like we we just have to continue to. Uh, we're just getting back into it right now, so it's baby steps from for now, and and we're gonna, uh, you know, when the games start up, there's gonna be two teams trying to win, so. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Our first challenge is uh, Alaska Fairbanks on October 2nd, and we're just looking forward to that date. Cool. Are you going to Alaska, or are they coming to you? No, they're coming to us. <laughs> <laughs> so. I was going to say, uh, and, uh, and just to a big time change, that's for sure. So. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's a good trip, though. I mean, we in the old WCHA, we used to go up to Anchorage all the time. Right. Um, and we, we really look forward to that Alaska trip. Uh, nice. Just a little change of scenery. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Coach, we just want to thank you for for coming yeah. on and spending some time with us and sharing I got, some insight. Scott, I got one more question for Garrett. Oh, you know, sure. just uh, just to close here, um, Garrett. I just first want to thank you for for joining us tonight. But you know, what advice would you give to Brock as he kind of prepare, prepares, excuse me, uh, to enter the professional ranks? Well, hey, I I never played there. I've never played there. But he just has to be himself. It's it's uh, what he's done at every step of the way. You know, he's he's had success. Um, I think what's gotten him there, though, is just his competitiveness, his willingness to work. And he is one tremendous human being. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that goes a long way. Like uh, the value, take take hockey away from it. Uh, what he means to our room, uh, what he means to those players around him. I think uh, I think that's that's what uh, makes him the most special. He's he's a he's a family man. He's a team guy. Um and and that's what's going to take them the furthest. You know, when hockey's over, um, that's going to what that's what's going to keep them keep them going in this world. And um, he's he's got an exciting future, and and, and we're all going to have fun watching him. Yeah, that's for sure. And uh, I'll tell you, we just can't wait to be able to to see him on TV when possible this year. And, and like I said, we know you guys are going to have a great season. So for sure. we just want to want to wish you the best of luck for this season. And um, and again. Thank you for, for coming on and taking the time to talk to us. We really appreciate it. No, well, thanks for having me, you guys. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, right. yeah, again, please give our condolences to Bob, please. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. absolutely. All right. Thank Take you so much, Coach. All right, Garrett, have a good evening. All right, take care.